What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at radio buttons for TTK Bootstrap, Kinter, and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at radio buttons for TTK Bootstrap. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab a totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter widget attributes. To get your free copy today, head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll shoot that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com, you get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at radio buttons for TTK Bootstrap. Now we're gonna look at the actual buttons, these round things. We're also gonna look at radio buttons, like the actual buttons here. So you can click and it'll go from one to the other. They act in the same way as radio buttons, but they look like actual buttons. So that's what we're gonna be looking at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this TTK Bootstrap series. So check it out if you haven't so far. So I've got some basic starter code that we've always got. I'm calling it rad.py, short for radio, I guess, radio button. Whatever, we're importing TTK Bootstrap as TB. I've pip installed that already. And we're using the superhero theme. So let's come down here. There's a few different ways to make radio buttons and I'll show you a couple different ways in this videos, but I like to create a Python list that'll have all the things that I wanna make buttons for. And we just loop through that and create buttons for each one. But I'll show you a more manual way to do it also later on in this video. So let's uh, create radio button list. So I'm gonna create a list called toppings and this is gonna be, I don't know, pizza toppings or something. So let's go pepperoni and we'll just do a few of these. We also want cheese pizza and we also want what veggie pizza, something like that. So it's just a basic Python list, nothing really interesting to see here. But now we also need to create a Kinter variable, keep track of everything. So we want to know when you click on a button, which button you've clicked on. So we need a Kinter variable for that. And Kinter has these special variables. You can have string vars or int vars. We're gonna use a string var for this. So I'm gonna call this my underscore topping. And we're gonna set this equal to a string var, just like that. And that's all there is to it. So now let's loop through the list and create radio buttons. So let's go for topping in toppings, all right? So remember toppings is our Python list. We're gonna loop through it for each topping in there. What do we wanna do? Well, let's create a tb.radio button. And notice the b in button is lowercase. I have a tendency to want to make it uppercase, but it's lowercase. And we want to put this in root. And now we have to pick a boot style. And just like everything in TTK Bootstrap, you can use all your basic boot style styles. So primary, secondary, info, danger, uh, dark light, all the things. So let's create, uh, let's do danger. So danger is red, so we'll create red ones. And then now we need to set a variable. Well, we know what our variable is. We've defined it right here as my topping. So let's pop that in there. Now we also wanna designate the text. What is gonna say on the actual radio button itself? What text should it be? Well, I think it should be topping, right? So for pepperoni, it'll say pepperoni. For cheese, it'll say cheese. For, for veggie, it'll say veggie. Now, like I said, there's lots of different ways you can do this. You can use a list of tuples and then, you know, have a different name and a different thing, you know? So instead of pepperoni, it might be pepperoni and one cheese and two veggie and three. Uh, you know, so you might put the name here and the, the variable there. Like I said, there's lots of different ways to do radio buttons. They all work with bootstrap. So we're gonna do it this way. And we also need to set the value. The value will also be topping. So whenever somebody clicks on it, what do we put in this variable? Well, we put whatever that topping is, right? So my topping, the variable will become pepperoni. My topping, the variable will become cheese, etc. So, okay, that looks good. Now we can also dot pack this right here if we want. Give this a pad while like 20 to push down the screen a little bit. And that looks good. Now notice we didn't name this. We didn't go like my underscore button equals like we normally would. Since we're looping through here, we don't need to do that. And since each of these have a variable, we don't need to distinguish between each one. They're all gonna be the same, right? So if we click on one, that means definitionally the other ones can't be clicked on. That's what a radio button is. You can only click on one at a time. So we could do it this way. So, okay, that looks good. Now there's a couple of different ways to figure out which one you've clicked on. You can either create a button 
And then whenever you click that button, it'll sort of like submit it and then you can do something or you can add a command right to the radio button. We're going to do both here just so I could show you kind of uh, how to do that. So let's create button and let's just call it my underscore button. This is going to be a TB dot button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say something like click me. Right. And let's give this a command of a uh, clicker, right? So we're going to click the button and run this clicker function. So before we do that, let's my underscore button dot pack this guy, put it on the screen, give it a pad Y 20 to kind of push it down the screen a little bit. So while we're at it, let's also create a label so we can output when we click on something, we can output it onto the screen. Hey, you clicked on whatever pepperoni, right? So I'm going to call this my underscore label. It's going to be a TB dot label. We want it to be in root and we want the text to start out saying you selected colon nothing, right? So then let's go my underscore label dot pack. Give this guy a pad wide 20 to push down screen a little bit. Okay, so now we've got this clicker function we need to create. So let's come up here and create it. So let's go clicker function and let's define clicker. And here we just want to change the label. So let's go my underscore label dot config. And we want the text to say, let's create an F string and let's say you selected. And then let's put in a variable. So what variable? Well, it's this variable right here, right? Our string var variable. So we want to uh, my underscore toppings dot get this right. And that's a function. So put your brackets there. So that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure that worked. So head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python rad dot five. And when we do, we get pepperoni cheese veggie. That looks good. You selected nothing. When I click on veggie, you can see it's red because we selected danger. The boot style of danger is red, right? Now, if we click this button, it says you selected veggie. And we're good to go. That's all there is to it. So cheese, cheese, pepperoni. So that's awesome. Very easy. But what if you don't want to use a button, right? What if you just want to click cheese and have it automatically update? Well, very, very simple. So let's come down here and right here in our button, we've given it a command of clicker. We could just take that thing and apply it to the radio button itself. So come up here inside of our radio button pop that in there, command equals clicker, save it, head back over here, run this guy one more time. And now when we click cheese, boom, it says you selected cheese. Very cool. You selected pepperoni. So just depending on the flow of your program, what you need it to do, you might want to have a button. So if somebody's like filling out a form or something and there are other things in the form you want them to fill out, name, email address, whatever, you probably don't want them to click this button and then boom, it submit the form, right? You would want to click this button, select pepperoni, finish filling out the rest of the form and then click a order button or whatever. Boom. Then it says pepperoni. So you could use either way. Uh, just depends on what you're doing. So, okay, that's cool. So now we've got these things working, but when it comes to radio buttons, they're actually buttons too. These are nice little round things you could sort of toggle, but you could do the same thing with buttons themselves. So how do we do that? Well, I'll show you how to do that right now. And there's actually two different styles you can use in bootstrap to do that. So let's come back over to our code. And let's uh, create actual radio buttons, radio button buttons. There we go. Actual radio button buttons, <laughs> right? So this is a good way for me to also show you a second method to do radio buttons. You know, up here we created a list of all of the buttons we wanted and then we loop through it here. Well, that, that might be overly complicated if you've only got one or two things you want as your radio button thing. So you might want to just create them manually. So how do you do that? Well, we can, we can do that. I'm going to call it radio button one and radio button two. And we'll just set that equal to a TB dot radio button, just like before. And we want to put it in root. Now we make them into actual buttons with a boot style. So let's set the boot style equal to, and let's change up the color. I'm going to call this info color, but to make it an actual button, we call the tool button boot style, and that will create an actual button. And we have to do the same thing as the other radio buttons. We have to set a variable. So let's set that equal to my underscore topping again, because remember up here we did the same thing, right? We also need to set a text. What is the button going to say? Well, I'm just going to say radio button one, right? There we go. We also need a value, right? So I'm just going to say uh, radio button one. 
And we also need to give this a command of clicker. So when we click on it, we want to run that clicker function, right? So I'm going to copy this whole thing. And we actually also need to rb one dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of 20. Now I did this on its own line. You could also do it at the end of it, but nah, I like to do it on their own lines when you're doing them manually. So, all right, let me get rid of that and paste this thing in again. And let's call this RB2. And this is also going to be a tool button. We can also do the second style of TTK bootstrap tool button. And that is an outline. So I'll show you both of them. This one is just tool button. This is tool button and outline, right? So again, same variable, but instead of radio button one, we want it to say radio button two. And for the value, it also wants to be radio button two. Okay, so let's RB2 dot pack this guy, make sure we put him on the screen, give him a pad wide of 20 to push down the screen a little bit, save this, head back over here, run this guy one more time. And now we have two buttons down here and they're actual buttons. And it's the info color, this sort of light blue. This one is the regular one, it's solid, right? When you hover over it, it changes to dark blue. This one is outline, when you hover over it, it changes like that, but it's outlined otherwise, so that's kind of cool. And the same thing occurs. If we click this one, it says you selected radio button one, and this one is unselected. If we click this one, boom, it says here at radio button two, and this one gets unselected. Because with radio buttons, you can only have one at a time. Likewise, if we come up here and click cheese, boom, these two buttons both become unselected because these are all the same radio button series, I guess you would call it. And again, it says you selected cheese. So veggie, cheese, pepperoni, radio button one, veggie, radio button two, cheese, whatever you like, all the different things. And that's all there is to it. So those are radio buttons with TTK bootstrap. Very simple, very straightforward. Just remember you use the same sort of functionality as a regular Kinter radio button. The only real difference is you add a boot style and it changes the color. Otherwise, you just treat them like any other radio button in Kinter. And there you go. So that's all for this video. If you like to be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab a totally free PDF version of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. I think it's awesome. Over 150 pages with all the Kinter widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book and your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.